Good morning, Bear Creek. Happy Sunday to you. Let's begin our praise and worship to the Lord. Amen. All right, here we go.
would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in all his love for me all his love
heard the tender whisper of love in the dead.
Lord, we just thank you today. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You never make an error, Father. I pray that you know that he knows who you are. That he hears your cries at night, that he hears your victories, that he hears your praises. If you're out there and you're someone who thinks that you're worth nothing, just know that Jesus died on the cross for you. Just know that you were the thought that was in his head when he was on the cross. So if you're worth nothing, if you're worthless, then why would he do that for you? He's a good, good father, not just to me or our leaders of the church or the pastors of the churches. He's a good, good father to you. Just know that you're special. Know that you're loved. Wherever you're at right now, just feel his presence. He's calling out to you. Just run to him and know that he is perfect in all of his ways and that even though we were made flawed, we are still made in his image. You are still loved by him. Lord, thank you that you love us, even as we are. Thank you that you're a good, good father. Thank you that you carry us by our hands, that you hold us in your heart. We give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. What an amazing God we serve. Thank you so very much for our worship team. They're so great. It's the day that the Lord has given us to praise God. The psalmist says, praise the Lord, O my soul, O my innermost being, praise his holy name. O my soul, O my inner being, praise his holy name. And then it says, who satisfies our desires with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteous and justice for all the oppressed. I'm so glad that you have joined with us today. Welcome to Bear Creek United Methodist Church, a safe, safe, inclusive faith community seeking and growing in Christ's love. We're so happy that you are praising God with us on today. Please register your attendance and stay connected. Let us know who you are. We love being here with you. It's prayer time here at Bear Creek. I'm so glad that we are a praying church. Prayer makes the difference in our lives. I had someone share a testimony with me that had a, a dangerous amount of blood platelets, uh, creating uh, a condition, something known as thrombocytosis cytosis, something like that. But she, she prayed and, and she asked God specifically to bring that number down. I agreed with her in prayer and, and she had some others agree with her. Within two weeks, that number had gone down by 100 points. Boy, did we praise God. God is so, so good. And, and it, let me say this. I believe that God works through those uh, to, that, that help us with gifts of healing. So I want us to continue to praise God that prayer works and allow God to move in your life. Amen? Let us pray. God of compassion and mercy, thank you. You never fail us. You never fail to help us or comfort us when we seek you. Please give us strength and peace and enable us to know that you are near, present with us right now in every situation. Give us wisdom and care to those who minister to us. Grant that we may have no fear because you are with us. You are the source of all life and health. We give you thanks for human knowledge and medical skills, for nurses and doctors and all those whose hands have brought the gift of healing. Continue to make us whole body, soul, and spirit. In the name of your son, our healer, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Please stay connected with our Stay Connected at BearCreekUMC.org email, or you can text me at 832-773-4901. And remember the words of Julian of Norwich, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for giving on today, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart is will be also. You know, I love having a heart filled with God's love. There's nothing more comforting during these times than to know that you are loved by God. And that's what I want for you. I want you to know how much God loves you. God will fill your heart and comfort you so that you can have that peace. Pray for our preschool. We're now enrolling infants to pre-k uh, four five-year-olds uh, whether it's part-time or full day options are available you can contact us call us or you can go to the school website at bcumcs.org we're excited about what god is doing we have a developmentally appropriate hands-on learning in a safe and a loving christian environment it is awesome. Matter of fact, we have the low ratios, we have quality teaching, and that equals kindergarten success. We love our school. We love all of those that serve our, our director. We love our staff, our school board. We want you to be a part of our school this year. Please, come be a part. We encourage you to give electronically. You may mail in your gift, or you can call Marsha if you need help giving electronically. Let us pray. God of love, thank you for giving us the right attitude in giving today, for removing the bitterness in our hearts and allowing us to give generously. God, I pray that you soften our hearts, make us more generous, bless all who give today, and show your love in a mighty way because of their obedience. Bless these tithe and offering, we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so as you give today, smile. Judges chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. When that whole generation had passed, another generation came after them who didn't know the Lord or the things that he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did things that the Lord saw as evil. They served the Baals, and they went away from the Lord, their ancestors, God, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. They went after other gods from among the surrounding peoples. They worshiped them, and they angered the Lord. The word of God for the people of God, and everyone said, thanks be to God. Finding peace in a pandemic. You know, many have lost their peace in these last few months. They're worrying about everything. Their problems have become too heavy for them to bear. Now they're finding themselves upset even with God. Newsflash, you're not alone. You're not alone. As we take a look at the book of Judges, we discover a recurring cycle that defines Israel's state of being. But it sounds very similar to where we are in our country today. There's a five-fold cycle of peace, disobedience, oppression, repentance, and deliverance. Last week, we focused on peace. Today, let's explore disobedience. The title of this sermon is Disobedience Disrupts Peace. Peace is that outcome of living according to God's plan. God gives us a choice of outcomes we are allowed to choose good or evil, life or death, peace or confusion, God's way or our way. I want to introduce you to a decision-making process that includes God's will, the false identity's will, and what John Wesley called liberty. Both God's will and the false identity's will contain strong indications that may be manifested in our thinking, our feeling, and our acting. 
The tendencies and inclinations of God's will are completely opposite of the false identity's will. Matter of fact, they offer two different ways of living. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 says, My counsel is this, live freely, animated, motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of selfish self-interest in us that is at odds with the free spirit. Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways are antithetical so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel at a given day, on a given day. Matter of fact, it says, why don't you choose to be led by the Spirit and so escape the erratic compulsions of a law-dominated existence? Choosing to live by God's will is driven by our love for God. Our love for God, our love for others, and our love for ourselves. It is a way of life that allows us to experience living freely, animated, and motivated by God's love. It is a life of peace. Eugene Peterson calls it a free spirit. Our spirit is in communion with God's spirit, and we are spiritually alive. We are flowing with God's love to, to love and accept ourselves and others. We have the disposition of Christ. Choosing, on the other hand, to live by the false identity's will in which it is driven by sin makes us hostile towards God and contains a root of selfishness that is at odds with a free spirit. It is a life that leads to destruction. God's will and the false identity's will are similar to that of an operating system for your computer. The operating system or OS is the interface between the computer user and the computer hardware. The hardware is like our thinking, our feeling, and our acting. God's will or the false identity's will is what controls what we think, feel, or act, or do. The operating system or that software performs the basic task of what? Moving files, it, it helps you uh, put it into memory, process management, handling input, output, put even the, the printing of files, right? Well, think about God's will. God's will or the false identity's will will manifest in our thoughts, in our feelings, and in our thinking, in our actions. And usually, usually, we know exactly which operating system is operating at any given time. Judges chapter 17, verse 6 says this, For in those days Israel had no king, so everyone did whatever he or she wanted to do, whatever seemed right in his or her own eyes. You're going to find this statement repeated in chapters 18, 19, 21. It's clear. It's clear that selfishly doing what you want to do is the false identity's will. Remember, this was a time before God was anointed, had anointed a king, and at the same time, God desired to be the king of Israel. But they didn't want God. By choosing the false identity's will, that is, whatever seems right in his or her own eyes, there was no room in their lives for God. There was only room for one king to sit on the throne of their heart. John Wesley said it this way, in a Christian believer, love sits upon the throne, which is erected in the innermost soul, namely, the love of God and love of humanity, which fills the whole heart and reigns without a rival. 
there's no room for two to sit on the throne of your heart. God told Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 7, no, they've rejected me as king over them. When we reject God as our Lord and our king, then we become the idol that we worship. Judges chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 says, the people of Israel did evil in God's sight. They served Baal gods. They deserted God, the God of their parents, who led them out of Egypt. They took up with other gods, gods of the peoples around them. They actually worshiped them. And oh, how they angered God as they worshiped God Baal and goddess Esther. Notice the evil they did. They refused to serve God. They served Baal gods. Baal meaning owner or Lord. The verb means to exercise dominion over, to own, to control, to lord it over. When we refuse God as Lord, then we choose the false identity. And it gives us a, an illusion of being our own boss. When in reality, we become slaves to the false identity. But in next week, topic, that's what we're going to talk about. Slavery to sin, oppression. If you have lost your peace, especially during this pandemic, first of all, examine the operating system that is controlling your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. If it's clear that it is God's will, great, you should be at peace. But if you see that it's the false identity's will, identify what it is. And then secondly, be aware who's sitting on the throne of your heart. Is it Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords? Or is it the false identity? If it's the false identity, then you must identify, is it a person, is it a place, it is an object? An object? that is sitting on the throne of your heart? Third, I want you to pinpoint how you may be worshiping or giving your attention to this person, place, or object more than to God. You see, the root meaning of worship is to give worth to something. The question to ask is, am I giving more worth to this someone or something more than God. Lastly, I've explained to you God's will and the false identity's will, but remember I mentioned to you liberty. Liberty is important while God's will and the false identity's will provide our various inclinations that, that manifest in our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Liberty is God's gift of a limited, autonomous, capacity to refuse to enact any particular inclination. See, God has given us the power to say no or to accept. Liberty allows us to align with God's will and say no to the false identity or to align with the false identity and say no to God's will. You and I, we can't self-generate this love that God has for us, but we can align with the false identity and use our liberty to stifle the love. We can actually stop God's love from flowing out, prohibiting us from loving ourselves as well as loving others. Also, God's grace enables us to access our liberty and align with God's will and prevent the false identity from controlling our actions. When we say no to the false identity through the power of God's spirit because of this liberty, you and I, well, we don't have to lose our peace. Can you identify those things that you need to say no to that's been disrupting your peace during this pandemic? My desire for you is that you will hold on to your peace as long as you 
can. I want you to make God your sanctuary of peace and dwell there for as long as you can. Shirley Caesar, she is a gospel singer that uh, she's in her 80s. I, I went to one of her concerts when I was a young man and she would sing this song. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. You see, Jesus gives us peace. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I give to you not as the world gives. Don't be troubled and don't be afraid. When Emma Jimenez was working on her project, My Promise, My Faith, a pen for Girl Scouts, she put this poster together. You can see it, make the world a better place. She chose this scripture because she knew that it was God's peace that would make this world a better place. Notice where she puts the cross. So you see, Jesus gives peace. I want you to hold on to your peace. And as surely Jesus says, the world didn't give it, no one gave it to you, so do not let anyone or anything take it away. Hold on to your peace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you. Thank you for the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. Jesus gave us peace. He's given it to us. We can't find it in anything. We can't find it in any person. It only comes from you. Thank you for the peace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't have that peace and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, today is a great day. I invite you to say yes to making co a commitment to Jesus Christ. There are two parts to this commitment. First is a decision, a decision to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. It just takes a prayer, making that decision right now. Will you pray with me? Say, Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and be my savior. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the first decision. The second part of commitment is maintaining that relationship with Jesus Christ. That's a daily walk with getting closer and closer to God. It takes a decision every day to say, God, I love you. I want you to be my Lord. You can't do that alone. We welcome you to Bear Creek. We would love to walk with you. I would love to be your pastor. If you text me at 832-773-4901, I'll text you back. We'll get connected, and you can have a place where you can grow with us. We love you so very much. As you walk through this week, remember, hold on to your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. See you next week.